Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use one of the two bandsaws that you'll find in our welding shop. And here we have our bandsaw which is made by Ellis and it's a decent sized piece of equipment but in our shop we call this our little bandsaw. And when it's not being used we keep it in the down position so let me go ahead and open this up and we can start looking at all the other uh, parts to the bandsaw. And it's real simple. It's as easy as just grabbing onto the handle that's at the front of the bandsaw and just lifting up. Now let's take a look at how we can secure our material in place in order to make our cuts. This bandsaw comes equipped with a vise assembly. It works very similarly to a regular vise, but instead of having to spin an adjustment handle, this vise assembly comes equipped with a lever that we just need to push down and lift up. So we'll push the lever down in order to lock the vise assembly in place and then we'll lift up in order to uh, telescope it in and out so that way we can either set it up against our material or remove our material. This vise assembly also moves from side to side. So if we're cutting something that's a little bit smaller, we can go ahead and move the vise assembly in order to clamp down on the material properly. And the adjustment knob that allows us to move the vise assembly from side to side is actually located on the bottom of the vise assembly. So right now it's loose. You can see as it spins freely in both directions. So let me go ahead and just lock this in place. We want to make sure that this is hand tight. Now that we've tightened it down, you can see that the vise assembly really doesn't have that much wiggle to it. Now as I take a step back and... Now as we take a step back and start looking at the other parts of the bandsaw, I want to point out right here is the saw blade. We've got the blade guides and the guide rollers. There's the hydraulic system. And of course we got the on and off switch. The purpose of the guides and the guide rollers are to keep the blades straight as possible and stable as you're making your cut. So now as we zoom back out a little bit, let's see how the guides and guide rollers help to stabilize the saw blade and how we can adjust it for optimal use. Let's use this small piece of steel rectangular bar to help us understand when and how to adjust our guides. So I'm going to set the material on the platform and then I'm going to lock it in place using the vise assembly. After I've locked the vise assembly in place, I'm going to make sure that the steel doesn't move around. And now as I lower the bandsaw as we normally would during cutting operations, we can see that there's a pretty good sized gap between the edge of our material and the drive rollers. And when we have a gap like this, we're opening up for the risk of having our blade shift from side to side and ultimately bending as we're cutting the piece of material. And of course we know that a bend in the blade would damage the blade, uh, it would render it useless, and we could take the risk of damaging our piece or damaging the equipment. So ultimately, we need to close this gap. And in order to close up the gap and get our drive rollers closer to the material that we're cutting and better stabilize the blade, we need to rotate this adjustment knob counterclockwise. And that's going to unlock our guide so that way we can push it forward and just do the reverse if we were cutting something larger. We can go ahead and pull back on it. And once you get those drive rollers close enough to the material, uh, to where the guide itself doesn't interfere with cutting operations, you can go ahead and lock it in place. And once you've locked it in place, go ahead and check it. Make sure that you've tightened it down all the way and it's not going to wiggle on you. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the hydraulic system. In essence, the hydraulic system serves two purposes. You can use the hydraulic system to control the feed rate, which is basically how much weight is being applied to the blade as you cut through the material, and not so much the speed of the blade. It also serves as a secondary safety feature. 
if someone were lowering the bandsaw down to cut their material and they just happen to lose their grip and let go, it prevents the bandsaw from slamming down on the material and damaging the blade or damaging another part of the equipment. And so as we zoom in on the hydraulic system, there's really two main parts to it. The adjustment knob and the hydraulic line, which allows for the flow of the hydraulic fluid. And so whenever you intend on using this bandsaw, please take a look at the hydraulic system. Take notice the position that the adjustment knob is in. If it's screwed in all the way, that basically locks it in place. You're going to have a lot of pressure on the hydraulic system and it's going to prevent you from closing it. Please don't fight with it if you feel pressure. If you put too much pressure on the hydraulic system, it's gonna blow that line. And you know what happens when you blow the line? You're gonna have hydraulic fluid all over the place. And in this situation, you wanna remember righty tighty, lefty loosey. So go ahead and rotate it counterclockwise to open up the hydraulic system and alleviate that pressure, which is gonna allow you to open and close the bandsaw. Now let me direct your attention to just behind the rear roller guide to a part that's called the chip brush. Uh, it resembles a circular wire brush. It barely sits against the side of the blade and you'll notice that it also spins freely. As the blade circles around and cuts through your material, the job of the chip brush is to dislodge any chips or metal shavings that become lodged between the teeth of the blade, ensuring a good quality cut. Now the next part I'm going to show you is called the blade pulley. And you'll probably hear some people refer to it as the drive wheel. There's one at both ends of the bandsaw, and they're both behind a metal door. And the blade pulleys are what send the blade around and around, which allows us to make our cuts. Now keep in mind that this blade is spinning very fast, and so these blade pulleys are spinning just as fast as the blade. At no point in any time during the operations of this bandsaw should either door to the blade pulleys be open. Both doors should be closed and this way we can prevent injury to ourselves, injury to others, and damage to the equipment. And of course there's the on switch. It's located towards the front of the bandsaw and on the side. Now this is an older model LS bandsaw. So instead of having a push button to activate the bandsaw, we have a toggle switch. And at first glance, the toggle switch can be a little hard to see, so pay attention to where I'm pointing. So you can see it barely sticking out of the side of the bandsaw, and to activate it, we just switch it down. And then of course, to deactivate it, we just flip it up. Easy peasy. So before using the bandsaw, make sure to check all of these areas, make sure they're all in the proper position and in working order. And once you've done that, you're good to go to start cutting your material.